ocean for me is life. Habitat. Tourism. Ocean is beautiful and sweet. Bahari kwangu ni kama tu stare. Inatoa ajira kwa jamii. Bahari ni mapato. The world's oceans drive global systems that make the earth habitable for humankind. The oceans also carry the bulk of the world's trade, are a major source of food and employment, and regulate the planet's weather, climate, and the air we breathe. The ocean is a driver of wild living ecosystems. It's involved in the gas exchange that all of us living are part of and it contains the uh, highest amount of oxygen. It is a sink for carbon dioxide which means then ameliorating the heating capacity of the atmosphere. The largest belt of sea trade for wild commodities is in the Indian Ocean. We know that three billion of people depend on these sources. It's the source of all water, fish, all these human needs and natural resources. With the Indian Ocean, we have a landmass blocking the northern part. It is the only ocean that connects to another ocean in the low altitudes. We don't have such a connection with any of the other oceans. We have the three ridges in the Indian Ocean meeting in the south, creating a triple point. The Indian Ocean is unique. You can't imagine how little is still known of this area of uh, the ocean. Our understanding of the geologic, oceanic and atmospheric processes of the Indian Ocean is rudimentary since much of it remains undersampled. UNESCO's Intergovernmental Oceanographic Commission and partners are coordinating the second international Indian Ocean expedition to improve our relationship with the ocean through the development and dissemination of scientific knowledge. The first expedition took place between 1959 and 1965. Since that time, there's been a rapid increase in population along the coast, which has led to different impacts by human beings on the oceans. Uh, we've had a lot of fishing taking place. We've had wastes disposed in the ocean, and also had significant changes in technologies. We now have satellites. We have uh, modeling that can forecast events and equipment like gliders, which can go to the depths of the ocean. The second expedition will involve all the countries that surround the Indian Ocean. Kenya, with this uh, RV Mutafiti, will undertake studies in the northern part of the Western Indian Ocean. South Africa has also committed several of its research vessels. We also have uh, vessels coming from outside the region. Kenya have worked for a long time with the with IOC of UNESCO. The second Indian Ocean expedition is a very important expedition to the countries around the Indian Ocean area. The ocean is a very complex and a difficult environment to get best data. We require a vessel to take your scientists equipped with instruments. We need to build capacity and uh, I think Kalavi Mutafiti came in at the right time. Alavi Mutafiti was on an expedition and there was some participation of um, Belgian scientists to like this collaboration to continue. Countries will have the opportunity to utilize the vessel and I think this is important for the region because the sea does not have uh, closed boundaries. Kenya and uh, Belgium have uh, profited very much from the initiatives within the framework of UNESCO, the International Oceanographic Commission. Mutafiti is an enormous asset to Kenya and to the Western Indian Ocean. Mutafiti was a coastal research vessel for the Marine Institute in Belgium. Now Kenya has the tool to come up with research uh, information that can sustain 
a, a good man management of the coastal and, and the seas of the Western Indian Ocean. Every sample a biologist is going to take, every me measurement, physical oceanography is new to science. Oceans and coastal areas form an essential component of the Earth's ecosystem and are critical to human welfare. Ocean research contributes to sustainable management of natural resources, including fisheries, the prediction of weather and extreme events, and safety in navigation and shipping, benefiting the coastal population and society at large. Kenya had a very long collaboration with the IOC UNESCO. We look into research aspects, information gathering, data analysis, and the state of um, marine sciences in Kenya. We interact closely with the communities. We broaden their outlook and take advantage of their knowledge to bring good, sustainable methods of utilizing these resources. In seaweed production, in mangrove plantation. All these are examples which we have really worked closely with communities. We strongly believe in this approach of working together. There is always a connection between people and the environment. The communities benefit in terms of food security, nutrition, and from creation of jobs, creation of wealth in terms of trade and creation of new opportunities. The sea is a future that uh, we should be looking at in order to develop new economies. We understand the economic importance of seaweeds in the area of um, biofuels, pharmaceutical industries, the paint industries, and as food. In the future, biodegradable uh, plastics may replace plastics that we have today. This will be very important for the world, and this is well for coastal communities. The UNESCO and its IOC enhance scientific capabilities by strengthening a network of scientists and institutions to address present and future global challenges. Ocean education is about the promotion and application of knowledge, skills, attitudes and values for our sustainable future in creating a more resilient society. Ocean education is very important because oceans represent a resource for the country and a resource for livelihood. When we conduct uh, ocean education, we bring these elements into sharp focus. Ocean Teacher Global Academy is essentially a mixture of a physical classroom and online educational platform. We had applications far and wide from South America, India, and the entire African continent. When we conduct trainings, it basically builds the capacity of these countries to understand the ocean resources that they have. We believe that these scientists can go back and reinforce the policies that exist back in their countries, and that is a big win for marine science and for sustainable development. Now we are organizing ocean cruises uh, because of the, uh, our newly acquired vessel, RV Tafiti. We would like to encourage more and more students to pursue careers in, uh, in, in ocean sciences. The training program was informative using research vessel and the equipment on board and how to apply them on our research activities. Network is of essence to any researcher, especially if you're working with marine science and uh, management of fisheries resources. Fishes are not uh, contained in one area, they're transboundary, they move along. In the process, you end up managing a resource that is not confined in one area. There's need of sharing information, need of uh, coming together in research, in management of such resources. Another aspect is meeting people from different countries. It helps you to view various issues at different perspectives. We were very lucky to go in this uh, 
a research vessel to learn how we work in the ocean. It's really important to, to work together. We are not in the same level, so we can help together. When somebody have a new equipment, a new ideas, it will be a chance for lots of people of the region. If we arrive to work together, we can follow the other states and be in the same level. It was a real opportunity, this organization by Belgium, Kenya, UNESCO, to mix all uh, the countries or this region and uh, think about new relationship, new uh, ideas, new program research. This workshop brings together different countries from the Western Indian regions as well as the Northern Indian Oceans. This workshop uh, tells us how to uh, make a uh, ship arrangement, the planning, the cruises, and how the data collections. This will be very useful for the researchers. More understanding can be comes up after the collaboration during the second international Indian expedition. UNESCO, through the Intergovernmental Oceanographic Commissions, is trying to develop and disseminate all this knowledge. Social challenge is changing our attitude vis-a-vis -vis the ocean. One of the strategy is developing a network. Very early at UNESCO, we found out that alone you cannot respond to all these challenges. So we have the answer to category two, tackling specific issues to come out with the solutions. We have also the associated school and UNESCO club. All these networks are tackling this issue to have a sustainable impact. And SDGs and the African Union Agenda 63. Our children should be aware about the context, which is critical for our future and for our future generations. The ocean is my future.